Hi there, friends. A couple months ago, I shared with you a word about the Lord will restore, Yahweh El El Shai. But today, I want to talk to you about the Lord who will restore your health. I'm going to talk to you about that from a personal perspective because I believe when, um, when we share personal stories or testimonies, that exalts the Lord and that helps strengthen the body of Christ. So my story started last um, summer, the end of May 2017, and just out of the blue, I started having hip pain in both hips and lower back pain and my sciatic nerve, um, which that nerve runs deep into the buttocks. I had pain deep, deep inside and it kind of wrapped around my groin and I had terrible pain. So much so that I couldn't walk. Going upstairs, going down the steps was so uncomfortable, so painful that I only did that like once a day. And so um, anybody that's experienced pain of any kind, especially walking, knee pain, um, ankle pain, feet pain, hip pain, it's, it's like you don't want to walk because you don't want to aggravate and cause more pain. So that's what I suffered. I started like the end of May and it was all of June, July, August, maybe most of May. At least four months I had this terrible pain. And through that, I got depressed. Now, anybody that knows me knows I'm not a depressed person. I don't have a depressed person. I just don't go there. So this came on me and I wasn't even aware of it. I didn't even see it. It was like I was in a fog and, and it was just a bad state, a bad state of mind and body. And uh, so I, I struggled very, very, very much. But I received, it, received a healing. Um, I uh, went to church one Friday night and a lady minister laid her hands on me and I, I got completely healed, completely healed. But during those four months, the Lord would speak to me and he would say, from whence comes your help? Your help comes from me. And I would hear that almost daily. He would speak that to me. From whence comes your help? Dawn, it comes from me. But I pursued, you know, uh, physical therapy, and uh, that was a waste of time, a waste of money. It did nothing for me. I went to an orthopedic surgeon, and he ordered an MRI, and that really didn't show the problem. He gave me cortisone injections in both hips. That lasted about 12 hours. I got about 12 hours of pain relief and then all the pain was back. So that was a waste. And you would think that cortisone shots, one in each hip, I would have been perfect. Not. So through all of that, and the depression, I finally received healing when the prophet laid her hands on me and I got healed over three days. By That was a Friday evening. By Monday morning, I was completely pain-free. I felt terrific. And those of you who struggle with pain in your body of any sort, when there is pain relief, it's like, you know, it's like heaven. And I want to say that during that time, I never took any heavy duty drugs. Uh, I took extra strength Tylenol and Aleve, and I alternated them. The Aleve pretty much did nothing, and I would take the extra strength Tylenol at night to try to sleep. I could not lay on my left side at all, at all. It was way too painful. So I took the Tylenol just to kind of get through the night and I didn't take it every night because I didn't want to be dependent on drugs. 
And so throughout the day, I didn't take anything for the pain. I just struggled through it, believing God was going to heal me. Yet, I was pursuing doctors, physical therapy. I wanted to be pain-free. And yet, every day, the Lord would say, from whence comes your help? Your help comes from me. And ultimately, at the end of that time, he did heal me. My help did come from the Lord. So let me fast forward. So I pretty much had the next many months pain-free until last Wednesday. I woke up and all of it was back. Now, back in the summer when I had the pain, on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the worst, I was like a 10 plus. But Wednesday, I was probably like a seven. So I wasn't as bad as I was, but it was bad enough. And of course, from whence comes my help, my help comes from the Lord, I started to hear that in my spirit again. This is Sunday, I went to church, I didn't want to sit up front where I normally sit because I didn't want to walk. When you have pain, you don't want to walk. So I sat in the back, and when worship came, I just was quiet, didn't barely move. And I'm a worshiper. I dance, I move, I groove. I love the Lord, I love to worship. But I didn't, until this lady whispered in my ear, you need to move. And I began to worship and wow, my hip wasn't really hurting very much. And so I just finished the rest of the worship time really just with my whole heart, my whole body worshiping the Lord. I walked out of church today and my hip was not hurting hard, hardly at all. Now, the problem that I have is that the piriformis muscle deep in the buttocks compresses that sciatic nerve and it causes you to limp. You can't, you can't walk normal when it's hurting. You can't, you have to limp. And I, I made it to my car and I pretty much didn't even limp. And I was so excited. I was just so excited. And I was just standing on that word, the Lord will restore. The Lord will restore. He is Yahweh El Ashii. Now, before I get into the word, I need to share something else with you. On the way to church, this is what I hear in my spirit. He says to me, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Hmm. So, maybe my words have been, you know, maybe I haven't been lining up with heaven. I've been lining up with hell. I've been lining up with negative. I've been lining up with death. So I needed to take a new inventory of my words because, you know, I really heard him speak that. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I don't want to eat the fruit of death and negative consequences in my life. I want to eat the fruit of life. Then I remembered what you sow, you reap. Well, I want to sow good words because I want to reap good. If I sow negative words, if I sow criticism, if I sow judgment, I'm going to reap something negative. So, life and death are in the power of the tongue. What we sow, we reap. And I just want to be careful about the things that I say because I don't want to line up with hell and neither do you. Now, Isaiah 53, over the weekend, I did a little study. Yesterday, the Lord had me studying out Isaiah 53. I had done this before. But I needed to do it again. I did it a long time ago, but I needed to get this in my spirit. So Isaiah 53, 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
and by his stripes we are healed. So let me just unpack that for you. Surely he has borne, in other words, he's carried our griefs. Griefs, grief, griefs is a Hebrew word that means sickness, disease, and maladies. Now malady is just an old fashioned word. We don't use it anymore. But griefs means sickness and disease. And he carried our sorrows. Sorrows is a Hebrew word that means physical pain and mental pain. So let's just look at that. Surely he has carried our sickness and disease and carried our physical and mental pain. But he was wounded. That means pierced through. He was pierced through. That Roman sword pierced his side. Those nails pierced his feet. That crown of thorns pierced his scalp, his head. He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was crushed. When he was in Gethsemane, the Bible said that he was um, releasing great drops of blood under the crushing of what he knew he was about to endure. You can read that in Luke twenty two forty four. He was crushed for our iniquities. And by his stripes, stripes means wounds, bruises, blows. By those wounds, bruises, and blows that he suffered, we are healed. Rapha. He's Jehovah Rapha. And that means to make healthful. That means to be healed of personal distresses. That means cured, repaired, and thoroughly made whole. Wow. The chastisement, that word means punishment. The punishment for our peace was upon him. The punishment for our peace. It means complete soundness in our body. It means health, contentment, and completeness. So the punishment for you and I to walk in a place of peace, of complete soundness in our body, to walk in contentment and completeness, it was upon Jesus. I don't think it gets any better than that. I don't ever want to hear you say, don't say this. I know that Jesus is able to heal me. That is unbelief. Don't say Jesus is able to heal me. That is carnal. His word says he will heal you. I just shared you shared it with you. He will heal you. He will restore your health. He's not just Yahweh El Asha'ib, the Lord who restores. He is Jehovah Rapha, the one who heals you. You have to change your words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Don't say the Lord is able to heal you. That is full of unbelief. The Lord will heal you. So you say to yourself, the Lord will heal me. I am his child. He will heal me. I have a covenant to be healed. And don't say, how about this? People say this to me. Well, if it's the Lord's will, you will be healed. Lord have mercy. Don't receive that. I don't receive that. I tune that out and I will not receive those words that if it's the Lord's will, he will heal me. No, it is the Lord's will to heal me. I just shared with you that he has borne our sickness and disease. He has carried our physical and mental pain. He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed 
for our iniquities. By his wounds, bruises, and blows, he has made us completely whole. He has cured us. He has repaired and thoroughly made us whole. It doesn't get any better than that. The punishment for my complete soundness in my body was upon him. The complete, uh, the, the punishment for my health and my contentment and completeness was upon him. So this is how it goes. I'm not going to receive that he is able to heal me. If it's his will, he will heal me. And how about this one? People pull this from Job, which is old covenant. We live in a new covenant. They will say, well, the Lord let Job be afflicted. Don't even go there. The Lord is allowing me to be sick. For what purpose? Well, the Lord allowed it. I guess I have this cancer because the Lord allowed it. He allowed me. He, he allowed me to be sick. Can I ask you a question? What kind of father would our Heavenly Father be if he allowed his children to be sick? That is absolutely crazy thinking. It's got to stop. It's just got to stop. I refuse to hear that or receive that. And yet there are Christians who say that to me all the time. Well, you know, the Lord allowed it. You know, he allowed Job. Brother and sister, we are living under a new covenant. Not Job's covenant. A new covenant. Written in the blood of Jesus. Sign, seal, deliver for you and I. I am not going to put up with that craziness. I will not receive that in my spirit. The Lord didn't let this happen to me because, well, you know, I really, I don't know. You know, I just kind of blew it, so the Lord allowed it to happen. No. Maybe you opened a door to your enemy. Maybe you opened the door by harsh criticism of another brother or sister. Maybe you opened the door by having a, a verbal uh, abusive fight with your spouse. Maybe you opened the door by blatant sin. That door has to be closed. It's called repentance. We close the door, we repent, we close the door. We don't want to give the enemy one legal bit of ground to cause us to be afflicted. Sickness doesn't come from our Heavenly Father. God didn't allow you to have cancer. God didn't allow you to have diabetes. And I'm going to tell you, it's tough to fight through this stuff. It's tough. It's a fight. But you stand on the Word. You believe His Word. By your stripes, Lord, by your stripes, by the blood you shed, I will be healed. Please don't ever say again, God is able to heal me. I know he's able to heal me. Do you hear the unbelief in that? God is able to heal me. It doesn't even line up with the word of God. You are speaking against the word of God. And he can't work in your life when you talk negative. You talk death. I'm going to say it again. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Jesus said he came to give us life and life abundant. If you are dying of cancer, that is not life abundant. If you can't walk, that is not life abundant. If you are suffering from some terrible illness, 
that brings pain in your body. That's not life abundant. If you suffer from terrible anxiety, depression, that's not life abundant. Now, God's word is either true or it's not. You either have to believe it or don't believe it. And then, I don't know, you may, you may, never, get, you may never get better. This is all a step of faith. It's will you believe? Will you believe God's word? I choose to believe God's word. I choose to believe it. So in the name of Jesus, I break off that spirit of unbelief. I break it off every brother and sister that will listen to this video. I break that spirit of unbelief off of you now in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to repent of that because it's evil. The Bible says it's evil. Unbelief is evil. That's what the Pharisees operated in. Total unbelief. It was wicked and evil. Jesus said to them seven times, Woe to you, hypocrites. Woe to you, brood of vipers. Because unbelief is that wicked. And you must repent of it. You must walk in the authority of the word. Romans, the eighth chapter, I believe it's a second verse. It says this scripture. It says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of death. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free free from the law of death. And I just want to look at that scripture real quick um, because I think I'm forgetting the last part of that. Um, oh, yeah, I did. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free or set me free from the law of sin and death. Of sin and death. So, I'm going to walk in the law of the life of the Spirit of Christ in Christ Jesus. I'm not going to walk in the law of Job that says God is allowing me or allowed me to be sick, to get sick, to be sick. You need to erase that. Just erase that. I know that people teach that, they say it. I'm telling you, it's not the truth. It's not the gospel. Jesus shed his blood. He shed his blood that you and I would be free from sin and sickness and death. He broke the power of the enemy over our lives. He broke the power of sin and death. And so we can live an abundant life. In that scripture where Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life abundant, life is the word zoe, Greek word zoe. It means God's life in me, God's life in you. Now, if God's life is flowing in you, then the question has to be, if God's life, God's life is flowing in me, why am I sick? I'm going to ask you to take an inventory. Take an inventory of your words. What's coming out of your mouth? Is it cruel? Is it harsh? Is it anger? Is it critical? Is it judgmental? Take an inventory and ask Holy Spirit, have I opened the door to the enemy in any way? Have I allowed sin to come in my life that I, I don't see? Maybe something not real obvious, but it's deep. It's a deep prick in your heart and it's gotta come out. That prick's gotta come out so that you can be healed so that Yahweh El Asha'ib can restore to you your health.
See, he is the Lord who will restore. He will restore your health. But you have a responsibility too. You have to do what the word says. You have to repent. You have to sow good seeds. I love this scripture. I've said this scripture forever and ever and ever. And the Lord brought it back to my remembrance again. I believe it's Proverbs 16, 24. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb. Think of that for a minute. Every time you speak a pleasant word, it's like a honeycomb. It's sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Now, isn't that odd? I mean, that's kind of an odd picture. Pleasant words. Sowing pleasant words is like a honeycomb. Sweet to the soul. Mind, will, and emotions. Sweet to the soul. And health to the bones. So if you have a bone issue, I guess you better be speaking pleasant words. So that Yahweh El Ashi, the Lord who restores, and Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals, will make you whole. Hallelujah. I trust that that will bless you. I trust because I know. I know I'm getting better, and I know the Lord is healing me. See, say that to yourself. The Lord is healing me because it's his will to heal me. The word says it. I believe it. I'm standing on it. And I'm not going to allow anybody to tell me otherwise. And I'm not going to let death come out of my mouth. I'm going to speak words of life over myself, to my spouse, to my children, to my grandchildren, to my neighbors, to my coworkers, to church people. I'm speaking life. And I'm speaking pleasant words because they are like a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Amen. Amen. I believe that if you dwell on God's word and you apply it, see, we can't just be a hearer of God's word. We have to be a doer of God's word. So you've heard God's word today. Now you become a doer. I bless you. I bless you to be healed and whole, sound in your mind, sound in your body, free, free of sickness and disease, pain, completely free. I believe it for you, and I trust that you will be. Amen.